I know like I've asked you a lot of mm-hmm. questions on these scale but then I'm just okay. curious to know like what is the average increase in the package one can hold if you know if anybody has on uh, these these scale certifications mm-hmm. that's a very good question because Hello everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of the Career Catalyst. Today, we are diving deep into the world of security with a seasoned professional who has seen it all. Have you ever wondered what it takes to become an expert in the security field? Well, you are in for a treat. We will be exploring the journey, challenges, and invaluable insights of someone who's climbed the IT security ladder. So stick around. This is an amazing, you know, this is a, will be an amazing episode you won't want to miss. Joining us today is Mr. Saman, a senior security consultant with over nine years of experience in the field. Saman, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Ritika. Thank you for having me. Yeah, Saman, just let's start at the beginning. Can you just tell me uh, about your background, your education and all? Sure. So, I did my engineering from IP University. I am a 2013 pass out. I did my bachelor's in instrumentation and control engineering. And in 2015, from college itself, I got the placement. I got the placement offer from CSS Corp. That was for Chennai location. From CSS Corp itself, I got exposure to cybersecurity, to networking from there itself. I worked on very low level devices. I didn't work with enterprise level customers. I got exposure to routers, switches, Wi-Fi router, extenders, all those stuff, all those stuff. And from there itself, I started exploring more how a network looks like, what more I can do in that particular field. I did my research. I had a discussion with my seniors, with my team leads, like what all opportunities we have in this particular field. I worked there for around two years, and after that, I got an opportunity with HCL Technologies Noida, where I worked on a couple of firewalls, Checkpoint, Palo Alto, and some email proxies as well. I worked there for around three years. And then after that, I got again opportunity with CSS Corp as a Palo Alto tech engineer. I would say that was the turning point of my life because the knowledge and the information I got as a tech engineer that was invaluable. That was extremely helpful for me today where I am. That I would say is because of that particular opportunity. I worked on physical firewalls as a tech engineer and after that you know that the market changed and now everything is over the cloud, right? So as a cloud, I got an opportunity to work with Palo Alto Prisma Access SASE solution, which is secure access services, which is in very high demand. And also I worked on the competitor. Palo Alto competitor product, which is Zscaler, Zscaler SASE solution. I work there as well as a professional services consultant. And yeah, uh, currently I'm working as a Palo Alto resident engineer. I handle big accounts in India. I do the deployment for them. So that's how my career looks like. All right. Course, Saman. Uh, Saman, I just, I'm like, you know, I'm sure many of our viewers relate to the job search, you know, struggle. Like, what were some of the biggest challenges you faced in your first job? The biggest challenge which I faced in my job was that the guidance. Uh, it's very hard to seek guidance from your peers, from your seniors. You have to involve in that particular thing because from college you are straight away coming into the corporate culture it is totally different and, and also the major challenge is like uh, how you are going to implement what you have learned so training is something which is very important i would say that whoever is going to start their corporate job, okay focus on the corporate training 
whatever you have learned in the college that is not going to get into use. So whatever you are going through the corporate training that that will really help you. So you just focus on that. So that was that can be a challenge for an ind individual if they are not focusing on that particular thing. But if they are doing good, it will help you in their first job. Oh, that was like some valuable insights, Sarma. Like, I'm just curious, like, you know, at what point uh, in your career, like, you know, do you realize that you just needed to upskill yourself or, you know, what prompted mm -hmm. that decision to upskill yourself? <laughs> yeah, so it's very important that you analyze the market, what is happening in the market, because at yeah. the end, everyone is doing the hard work. If you are not putting your efforts in the right direction, your hard work, hard work will not pay you off. So you have to think of future. When I say future, you have to think of long term. Okay, if I'm spending my time in this particular thing or in this particular technology, what benefit I'll get after five years or 10 years? So that should sustain in the market, whatever it is. So you have to make a long term plan how you are going to design your career, in which sector you are going to go into. And when I joined CSS Pop as a tech engineer, I was working on physical firewalls. And during that time, that was around 2019, uh, COVID hit, right? So the company working culture totally changed. Everyone started working from home. So basically the workforce got distributed. So everything suddenly changed. Now you have to work from home as well. You have to work in a secure way. So everything went on to the cloud. The company didn't spend on their infrastructure, maintaining servers and all. So everything is taken care by the vendor whether it is Palo Alto, whether it is Zscaler. So at that point, I thought, okay, now the future is all about cloud. I have to switch my career from physical firewalls to the cloud firewalls to the SaaS team. So I, I gave interview. I got selected in Palo Alto as a professional services consultant. So I started working as a SaaS engineer. Then later on, again, I got opportunity with Zscaler as a professional services consultant. So I got opportunity there as well. So at that time, during the COVID time, I realized that, okay, this is the time I have to upscale my career. You never know after five years, maybe something else will come. So yeah, I have to plan for that as well. Yeah, actually, I was looking into your profile and, you know, I have seen that, like, you have also got a, Z, you know, Zscaler certifications. I would just right. want to ask you something, like, you know, like, what is the major difference between the AWS Azure Cloud and the Zscaler Prisma thing? I'm just, you know, mm -hmm. if you can brief us about mm -hmm. that a bit. Sure, sure. So, basically, Zscaler, Palo Alto Prisma, they have the cloud that you mentioned, AWS Azure. So they have their firewalls posted on those particular cloud. The cloud is provided by services are provided by the vendor, which is Palo Alto or Zscaler. Okay, let's just proceed. Like, I mean, since you have mentioned it, uh, you know, I, what are the challenges you have encountered while getting these certifications? Mostly like, frankly, the Zscaler. Like, if you yeah, can, like, uh, is there any the particular amount of school needed to get? Yeah, I mean, is there any particular amount of school yeah, needed yeah. to get the Zscaler certification done? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You need to have the certification. Uh, there is a score which you have to get to pass that certification. So there are various level of certifications. So. Okay. There are, there is a ZIA certification, then there is a ZPA certification, then there is a ZDX. So what is the difference? ZIA is Zscaler Internet Access. So that basically that certification is that, that you know how to secure traffic 
when it is going from a source to the destination, which is internet. GPA is the certification, which is basically for the traffic, which is securing your private access. And GDX is the monitoring platform of Zscaler. So in the GI and GPA as well, they have various levels. They have the GI admin level certificate, then they have the GI professional level certificate, and beyond that as well, there are certain certificates. So both okay. these certificates are in both the categories. So you have to be familiar with the product. As per your knowledge, you can attempt the certification. The path will be that you have to first attempt the GI admin level certificate. If you are familiar with the Zscaler, and you will be able to clear the admin level certificate. And you, if you have uh, some advanced level of knowledge, then you can go for the GI professional level, professional level certificate. Okay. I mean, how many chances one can avail in, in case somebody wants to go for a reattempt? And it okay depends how much the candidate want to pay. <laughs> as uh, much as he you know. can pay, he can attempt. Oh, okay, okay. I mean, uh, like, which profile best suits if somebody adds on to these, like, you know, these particular certifications in their skill set? So, if any network administrator, security administrator, security oh. professional, if they have the knowledge of the product, if they have the skills of the product, they can go for that particular certification. They can get them so certified because the certificates are globally certified so it is globally recognized certificate and the validity of this certificate is three years just an FYI okay. so once you are certified you are certified for three years okay okay and uh, like uh, someone like uh, I'm just curious I'm, I know like I'm asking you a lot of mm -hmm. questions on these scale but then I'm just okay. curious to know like what is the average increase in the package one can hold if you know if anybody adds on these these scalar certifications mm -hmm. that's a very good question because I'm sure a lot of freshers will be interested in the pay part <laughs> okay so as for the demand in the market so let me tell you by in next five years 96% of the companies will switch to SASE. It could be Zscaler, it could be Palo Alto, Prisma as well. And both are the leaders in the market as per the Gartner rating. Both are the leaders. So you will see Zscaler or Prisma access in most of the environment. As the demand is increasing, the opportunities are also increasing for SASE. Okay. And there are very less people who are skilled on SASE products. If I talk about the pay part, you can easily get 40 to 50 percent height. Easily you can get that. And that is the minimum. That is the minimum. You might get 100 percent height as well, as well as more than that. I have seen it. I have taken that in my career more than that so yeah that's really all right someone like if you had a uh, quite a journey in the it domain and like if i ask you like what have been the most significant changes you have witnessed in the cyber security over the years like could you like mm -hmm. just tell me that yeah uh, the major change is that now we have the flexibility of working from home which wasn't there before COVID. So that is the major change. Now companies are flexible, you can work from home. And they are allowing us to work from home because their network is secure now. You just connect to the VPN client on your machine and you can access your company resources as well as you can do anything over the internet as well. Everything is secure. So that was the toxic change which I have witnessed till now. The whole work culture has changed. Okay, uh, someone like as we wrap up, so, uh, like what mm -hmm. advice would you give to our listeners like who are looking to build a career in IT security? Mm -hmm. uh, the advice which I'll give is like set your goals and set your priorities. Take feedback 
from your seniors. Talk to your seniors, okay? Because they will be able to guide you and uh, this will help you to enhance your career. Because if you will talk to your peers or if you will talk to anyone who is like less, less experienced, they will not be able to guide you more because they are at the same level on which you are, right? So you have to talk to your seniors and also do your search, analyze the market, what is happening in the market. That is very important. And uh, yeah, you should have a growth mindset. Stay positive, stay resilient. That's all I would say. Okay, thank you so much, Saman. Like this has been an incredibly insightful, you know, uh, podcast. It has been, uh, you know, it went well. And like, you know, I'm sure like many of the viewers like must have got a insightful, you know, overview of that. And so thank, thank you, thank you so patiently. Yeah, thank you so much, Saman. Have a good day. Have a good day. Bye. There you have it, guys. A glimpse into the journey of an IT security professional. I hope you have found someone's experience and insights as valuable as I have. Remember, in the ever-evolving world of tech, continuous learning and adaptation are the key. If you have enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe to Networkings and leave us a review. Your support helps us bring more stories from the front lines of the tech industry. This is Ritika reminding you that in the world of IT, Security isn't just a job, it's a calling. Stay curious, stay secure, and keep pushing those boundaries. Thank you.